Hello, and welcome back to The Coachman. I know it has been a while, but uh, there's been a lot of um, progression in life and changes. So I've been doing a lot of stuff around the house and uh, just in between jobs, taking a little VK. But, uh, you know, getting back to it all. And so here we go. Now, for today's story, we're going to be reading a lovely Jewish ditty from Gertrude Landa, and it's called The Red Slipper. Uh, the funny thing is that if you just sit back and listen to this story, you're going to find that today's story, although it's different, it's going to be very familiar. So and with that being said, let's get into it. Rosie Red was a little sweet girl with beautiful blue eyes, soft pink cheeks, and glorious ruddy gold hair of the tinge that artists love to paint. I don't know why they always paint the same type of woman, though. Or girl, should I say. Her mother died the day she was born, but her grandmother looked after her with such tender care that Rosie Red regarded her as her mother. She was very happy with Rosie Red. All day long, she sang as she tripped gaily about the house or the woods that surrounded it. And so melodious was her voice that the birds gathered on the trees to listen to her and to encourage her to continue by daintily chirping whenever she ceased. Merrily, Rosie Red performed all the little duties her grandmother called upon her to do, and on festivals, she was allowed to wear a delightful pair of red little leather slippers. Her father's gift to her on her first birthday, oh, sorry about that, that's my uh, girlfriend getting her uh, wheelchair fixed and the dog going nuts over the delivery guy, but <laughs> that's normal. Now, although neither uh, neither she nor her father knew it, they were magic slippers which grew larger as her feet grew. Rosie Red was only a child and so did not know that slippers don't usually grow. That'd be kind of cool though. Think about it. You have, let's say, a pair of like Air Force Ones that like you had since you were a baby and they just grow with you. Now, that would never happen because honestly, six months in, I'm going to tear those to shreds. But if they like magically, re you know, fix themselves overnight, that'd be awesome. But uh, but yeah, but I guess these slippers just stayed with her. Her grandmother knew the secret of the slippers, but she did not tell. And her father had become too moody and too deeply absorbed in his own thoughts and affairs to notice anything. One day. Rosie Red remembered it only too sadly. She returned from the woods to find her grandmother gone and three strange women in the house. She stopped suddenly in the midst of her singing, and her cheeks turned pale, for she did not like the appearance of the strangers. Who are you? she asked. I am your new mother, answered the eldest of the three. And these are my daughters, your two new sisters. Rosie Red trembled with fear. They were all three so ugly, and she began to cry. <laughs> was she crying because oh, she's got a new family, or was she crying just because of how disgusting they were, or fugly, if you want to call it? Her new sisters scolded her for that, and would have beaten her had not her father appeared. Beaten. Let some new people put hands on me. He spoke kindly telling her he had married again because he was lonely and that her stepmother and stepsisters would be good to her. But Rosie Red knew different. She hastened away to her own little room and hid her slippers of which she was very proud. They have turned my dear granny out of doors. They will take from me my beautiful slippers, she sobbed. After that, Rosie Red sang no more. She became a somber girl and a drudge. The birds could not understand. They followed her through the woods, but she was silent, as if she had been stricken dumb, and her eyes always seemed too eager to be shedding tears. Also, she was too busy to notice her feathered friends. She had to collect firewood for, for the home, to draw water from the well, and struggle along with the heavy bucket whose weight made her arms and her back ache with pain. Sometimes, too, her white arms would scarred with bruises, for her cruel and selfish stepsisters did not hesitate to beat her, 
honestly, that sounds like she's working out. You know what I mean? She's got arm day on lock. And if I were her, I'd be putting hands on somebody. But talk about like what Kevin Hart said, putting the paws on somebody. I What I say, putting a foot in somebody. Often, they went out to parties for to dances. And on these occasions, she had to act as their maid and help them to get dressed. Rosie Red did not mind. She was only happy when they were out of the house. Then only did she sing softly to herself and the birds came to listen. And thus, many unhappy years passed. Once, when her father was away from home, her stepsisters went off to a wedding wedding dance. They told her not to forget to draw water from the well and warned her that if she got if she forgot, as she did the last time, they would beat her without mercy when they returned. So Rosie read, tired though she was, went out in the darkness to draw water. She lowered the bucket, but the cord broke and the pail fell to the bottom of the well. She ran back home for a long stick with a hook at the end of it to recover the bucket. And as she put into the water, she sang, swing and sweet to all till his cling, and to the surface safely bring. Now it so happened that a sleeping gin dwelt at the bottom of the well. He could only be awakened by a spell, and although Rosie Red did not know it, the words she uttered, which she had once heard her granny use, were the spell. The gin awoke, and he was so delighted with the sweet voice that he promptly decided to help the girl from whom he was peering down into the water. He fastened the bucket to the stick, and taking some jewels from a treasure of which he was the guardian, he put them inside. Talk about payday! Oh, how beautiful, cried Rosie Red when she saw the glittering gems. They are ever so much nicer than those my sister put on the bo- put on to go to the ball. Then she sat thinking for a while, and a bright idea came into her head. I will give these jewels to my sister, she said. Perhaps they will be kinder to me. Perhaps you need to like toughen up and just put, you know, hit them with the dark side, a.k.a. hit them with that nice whack slap, you know what I mean? She waited impatiently until the sisters returned from the dance and immediately told them. For a moment, they were too dazed to speak when they saw the sparkling precious stones. Then they looked meaningly, meaningly, at one another and asked how she came by them. Rosie told them the words she she had sung. Ah, we thought so, said the sisters to her horror. The jewels are ours. We hid them in the well for safety. You have stolen them. All right. I got to be honest. These two sisters, Rosie Red needs to like get red in the face for real and just go get them. But this is getting ridiculous now. All right. In vain, Rosie Red protested. Her sisters would not listen. They beat her severely, told her to hurry off to bed, and then snatching the bucket, they hurried off to the well. Talk about devious. They lowered the bucket and sang the words that Rosie Red had sung. At least they thought they sang, but their voices were harsh. The sleeping gin awoke again, but he did not like the croaking sound the sisters made. Ha ha ha, he laughed. I will teach you to disturb my sleep with his hideous noises and shall punish such pranks played on me. Here are some cro- are some more croakers. And he filled the bucket with slimy toads and fro- frogs. The sisters were so enraged that they ran back home and dragged poor Rosie from her bed. You cat, you thief, screamed one. You cheat, exclaimed the other. Off you go. Not another day can you remain in this house. Hold on. So they're com- So first they call her a thief, right? Well, actually, not even that. First, they come up in her house, right? Basically claim it as her own. Basically make this young lady, right, Her their maid, beat on her all the time. Call her a sneak thief. And then try to kick her out the house that it's hers. Nah, 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 nah. I'm telling you, she needs she needs to go off. I'm talking I'm talking about rage cage. 
straight up. <sighs> Rosie Red was too much taken by surprise to say anything. I wouldn't. Yeah, don't. You don't need to say anything. Just reach out and touch someone. It was an outrage to turn her out of her father's house while he was away on a journey. But the thought came to her that she could hardly be less happy living alone in the woods. She had only time to snatch her pretty red slippers. And soon, as she was out of sight of the house, she put them on. It made her feel less miserable. The sun was now rising, and when its rays shone on her, she began to sing. With her old friends, the birds twittering all about her, she felt quite happy. On and on she walked, much farther into the woods than ever before. When she grew tired, there was, a always, there was always a pleasant shady nook where she could rest. When she became hungry, there were fruit trees in abundance. And when she was thirsty, she always came to a spring of clear, fresh water. The magic slippers guided her. All day long she wandered. And when toward evening, she noticed her slippers were muddy. She took them off to clean, and then darkness fell. It began to rain, and she grew frightened. She crouched under a tree until she noticed a light, a light some short distance away. She got up and walked towards it. When quite close, she saw that the light came from a cave dwelling. An old woman came out to meet her. It was her grandmother, but so many years had passed that Rosy Red did not recognize her. Granny, however, at once knew her. Come in, my child, and take shelter from the rain. She she said kindly, and Rosie Red was only too glad to accept the invitation. The inside of the cave was quite cozy, and Rosie Red, who was almost completely exhausted, quickly fell asleep. She woke with a start. My pretty red slippers, she cried. Where are they? She put her hand in the pocket of her tattered dress, but could only find one. I must have lost the other, she sobbed. I must go out and look for it. No, no, said Granny. You cannot do that. A storm is raging. Rosie Red peered out through the door of the cave and drew back in fear as she saw the lightning flash and heard the thunder rolling. She sobbed herself to sleep again, and this time was awakened by voices. She feared it might be her be her sisters who had discovered her hiding place and had come to drag her forcefully back home again. So she crept into a corner of the cave and listened intently. Huh, this would be interesting because if her sisters come out, first you kick her out and now you want her back. You talk about an indecisive and just like fugly, fugly snitches. You know what I'm saying? Like it, these two, I'm telling you, they're they're wicked. Some wicked, wicked ones. A man was speaking. Know you to whom this red slipper belongs? He was asking. I found it in the woods. Rosy Red was was on the point of rushing out to regain her lost slipper when her granny's voice, very loud on purpose that she, she could hear, restrained her. No, no, I know not. She repeated again and again. And at length, the man departed. Granny came back into the cave and said, I am so sorry, Rosie Red, but for aught I knew, he might be a messenger from your cruel sisters. And of course, I cannot anyone let anyone take you back to them. Next day, the man called again, this time with several attendants. Again, Rosie Red concealed herself. I am a chieftain's son and wealthy, said the man. I must find the wearer of this shoe. Only a grateful, a graceful, and beautiful girl can wear such a dainty slipper. Rosie Red did not know whether to be more frightened or pleased. When her granny told her, the man was very handsome and noble of bearing. Day after day, he came, each time with more retainers, and finally, he arrived He arrived mounted on a richly caparisoned camel with a hundred and one followers, all mounted as he was. The girl I seek is here, he said. Deny it no longer. 
my, my servants have scoured the woods and the whole neighborhood. One is prepared to swear he heard a young girl singing yesterday. I got to say, if you keep going back to a cave over and over and over, and now you got a hundred peeps, you know what I mean? You're rolling a hundred deep and you got gang gang. Dude, by the time you had like 10 or 20, why not just go in and just be like, all right, let me just have a look. So I guess he's trying to be nice and noble and all that stuff. But all right, you come back with a hundred people. Doesn't make any sense why you just didn't do something with when you had like 50. Rosie Red saw that concealment was no longer possible. She liked the man's voice and she stepped out bravely wearing her one slipper. The stranger bowing low before her held out the other and Rosie Red took it and put it on. It fitted perfectly. Many girls have tried to put on that shoe, said the young man, but all have failed. And I have sworn to make the wearer my bride. I am a chieftain's son, and thou shalt be a princess. So Rosy Red left the cave with her granny, and mounting a camel was led through the woods to her new home where she knew not what happiness and the days of her suffering were quite forgotten, and always she wore her magic red slews. Oh, red slippers. Well, thank you very much for joining me, and um, if you would like more, uh, definitely head over to the website, which is www.thecoachman.com. That is www.th3coachman.com. Or you can head over and follow me on uh, on Instagram. You can also head over and uh, check out uh, check out the same readings that will be left over on uh, on on YouTube. Um, if you do head over to YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Um, or if you would like, you can just, you know, drop uh, drop your email on the website and uh, hopefully we'll have some good conversations. And please always reach out and leave me with any uh, any stories you would like to be read um, or anything, any ideas and whatnot. But, you know, until next time, make sure you, you know, keep on listening, keep on having fun, have a lovely day and take care.